Thank you, Mr. Chemata. Then proceed. Yes, I see that you have prepared written submissions, which. Uh, oh no, I think I did see. I see the reference to Tenga Tenga. Uh, that case. No, that's fine. I think I've, I've read them. <coughs> Mr. Chair. Yeah, yes, you may proceed. Thank you. There is, of course, the issue of condemnation. Yes. I don't simply want to delve into the merits of the matter, so to speak. Yes. I do understand from my learned friend, Mr. Myberg, mm. that on behalf of the legal team, there doesn't seem to be any opposition to the condemnation application. Was the delay seven days? The delay was, in fact, six calendar days. Yeah. Excluding Saturday and Sunday, it would have been four weekdays, Mr. Chairperson. Yes. And if you'll permit me, what we have done under enormous time constraints, Yeah. and I'm not going to argue the condemnation simply to place this before, Mr. Chair, and I know of your yeah. hectic schedule. Mm. To the extent that you've not considered there was a supplementary set of papers filed mm -hmm. during the course of the weekend, Mr. Mm. Chair will note that due to a large part my unavailability, various travels throughout the country and trials and so forth, mm. the founding affidavit did perhaps not enjoy all the consideration that it ought to have. Mm. And when I did have occasion to consider it during the course of, towards the end of last week, mm. I felt that we should supplement it. Oh, I don't think I've seen the supplement of affidavit. On what page is it in the bundle? We, we, it appears as though it hasn't been filed in the bundle. Mr. Chair, I know, I know that the legal team has been placed in receipt of it, but, yeah. we, but we do have a copy of it, together with annexures. Might we ask that it be received by you? Might we approach, Mr. Chair? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chair, so as not to waste time. Yes, maybe you can, you can tell Thank me you. what it says. And I know so. we pressed for time. So yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair will note from the supplementary set of papers. Uh, hang on one second. I think it's more convenient if you take out the affidavit, the supplementary affidavit and annexures. And uh, um, if they need to be brought back, they can be brought back rather than bring the whole file. As Mr. Chair pleases. I just didn't want you to be settled with loose papers because they're not stapled together and we apologize yes. for that. No, no, they can uh, file, put them in the right place in the file that I have in, in, in due course. Yes, you can continue. In essence, Mr. Chair, mm. I wish to make reference to The difficulties that our client and his legal team have experienced. Uh, well, before you do that, I see that the supplement draft of it seems to be quite substantial. Indeed. I, th I thought it's a brief uh, affidavit. Um, uh, I see it's 24 pages. I think I will need to read it properly. Uh, that is 24 pages without the annexures. Indeed, Mr. J. No, I think I would need to read it. Uh, and I don't think I can read it uh, this morning for this application to proceed this morning. I appreciate Mr. J's prediction. Yes, I thought it might be two, three, or five pages or something like that, but it's quite substantial and I see that it's longer than the, I think it's longer than the founding affidavit. It is indeed. <laughs> we thought it prudent that we would explain each and every single yes. factor then, that, read, that led to this delay of, of four days. Mr. Yes, Chair. yes. Whilst it's, it's not a substantial period of time, I respectfully submit that we are required to address it. No, no, you, you, you are right. Uh, <laughs> I think the difficulty is simply that uh, 
it arrived, you said, over the weekend. Uh, Indeed. Uh, so I haven't had time. I, I'm seeing it for the first time. It may have been sent to me. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't see it. Uh, but I would need to, to read it. Mr. So Chair. I think in terms of in terms of uh, the arrangement, your client is supposed to give evidence uh, later in the week, isn't it? He was warned to be in attendance yeah, as from, from today. today, but there's an informal arrangement yes, between yeah. Mr. Mayberg and myself. Yeah, yeah, and as yeah. we understood it, there yes. was a potential yeah. that he would be required to testify tomorrow afternoon. I don't know what the position is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, we should adjourn the application to tomorrow morning so I can read this this evening. I don't know whether the legal team had any plans of responding or they won't be responding because that might affect whether we adjourn it to tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, I can only get a chance to read it uh, tonight. Mr. Chair, I don't wish to speak on behalf of Mr. Mayberg, but the indication that we received, yeah. at least so that I'm certain about this and clear, yeah. is that in relation to condemnation per se, as per the founding affidavit, there was yeah. no opposition. Yes. I don't know that their position has changed yes. since their receipt of the yes. supplementary set of papers. It, it, it does, is something I can canvass with Mr. Mayberg. Does, does the supplementary affidavit only seek to supplement the original affidavit in respect of condemnation? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, may, maybe... Um, I'm tempted to to deal with it if that's what it, if that that's all it does, but maybe I should err on the side of caution and rather read the affidavit. Um, uh, probably then, if it deals only with condemnation, probably the position uh, may be that uh, the legal team doesn't intend to file anything. But, but Mr. Mabek will tell me just now. So subject to that, I think I, uh, I, will, I would adjourn the, the application to tomorrow at half past nine. As you please, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Maybeck, and then they can just sanitize the podium before Mr. Maybeck goes there. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, in relation to the supplementary affidavit, which I yes. must confess I haven't had an opportunity to study, yes. uh, but it's certainly unlikely, uh, given mm. what we indicated to yes. our opponent, yeah. that we would wish to say anything in response. Uh, yes. We don't intend from our side, of course it's up to you, yes. Uh, yes. to oppose condemnation. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, uh, so shall we say that you will indicate by end of the day if your view changes on that. Uh, I don't know if you will get a chance to, <laughs> to, to look at anything, but uh, I just want to, to know whether we can say the application is urgent to tomorrow, half past nine. Is that what that would be in order, Chairperson. I'll, I'll give you an undertaking. I'll look at the affidavit over lunch. Yes, and okay. I'll, I'll come back to you straight after that. Okay, no, that's fine. So this application is agent to tomorrow at half past nine in the morning. Okay. Um, uh, your 
would the next uh, matter be that of uh, the cross-examination? Yes, the, the next order of business, Chairperson, is scheduled uh, to be uh, Mr. Igaba's uh, cross-examination mm -hmm. of one of the in-camera witnesses. Yes. Um, I don't know where uh, Mr. Pretorius is, because I know he's dealing with that. Yes, he he ex he, he is on his, his understanding that we will start at 10, so because it's still 10 to 10, he must be on his way. I think we'll adjourn until uh, 10 o'clock. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. We adjourn. Unmute Lapatum, sir. Razabo, please give me the chairperson's share quickly for the last time. Here. Testing from the hearing venue. Uh, Offside, are you there? Can you hear us? Good morning. Yes, All right. Let's test. The witness, witness three, are you there? Say yes. Yes. Okay. Can you can you hear us clearly from the venue? Very clear. Yes. All right. Thank you. We'll let you know we are about to start. Hello. Salam alaikum. I hear you from far, like in Cape Town. Come to Joburg. Salam V. Hello. Testing one, two. September.
morning, Mr. Pretorius. Morning, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Are you ready? Yes, we are ready, Chair. Um, what is to take place this morning is the cross-examination of witness number three. Legal yes. representatives of witness number three uh, are present, as well as the legal representatives of Mr. Kagaba, who will conduct the cross-examination. As the legal representatives of witness number three may apply, if appropriate, for re-examination in terms of the rules, perhaps um, all should place themselves on record. Yes, let's do that. Uh, let's start with uh, 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 the legal representatives of Mr. Kigaba. Um, if you are able to, okay, they need to sanitize the podium before you go in, you go there. And uh, the legal representatives of witness number three may, uh, af may later uh, place themselves on record from where they are if it's possible. But if not, then they will proceed to the podium at that stage. Morning, Chair. Good morning. Uh, it's Solomon RASC. I appear with my learned junior, mm -hmm. Mr. Gumbi, mm -hmm. uh, instructed by the State Attorney's Office. Um, yes. For the former minister, Mr. Gigaba, and uh, we would like to avail ourselves the opportunity of cross-examining uh, witness three. We don't expect to be terribly long. Yes. No. No. You shouldn't be long. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No. That's that's fine. Um, uh, Mr. Pretorius, I think needs to come back to the podium. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, counsel for witness uh, number three. Thank you, Chair, and good morning. The name morning. is Sbusiso Dube from Bowman's Chair, and I'm representing witness number three in these proceedings. Thank you, Mr. Dube. Thank you, Chair. Okay. I think it might serve a useful purpose, Mr. Pretorius, for the benefit of the public, if possible, if you could just give the gist of uh, witness number three's previous evidence so that the cross, with the cross-examination, maybe they could follow You would that. bear with me a moment. Yes. Uh, Chair, witness number three gave evidence uh, at the same time as witnesses number one and witness number two. He gave evidence under an order of identity protection, which we've loosely called in camera, but properly regarded was uh, an order which allowed him to give evidence where his identity was protected and you gave an order that that should occur. Before summarizing the evidence of witness number three, may I just, just play some... Just one second. Um, I need uh, my file that relates to the in-camera application. Uh, no, that's not the one. Uh, but it is among the files that you were given this morning, Registrar. It's written on the spine in camera application. Okay. 
okay, let me see, maybe, maybe I thought it was not there. No, I think it, I was wrong. Yes, Mr. Petrovic. Chair, it is um, necessary to place on record, uh, because witness number three and witness numbers one and two, witnesses numbers one and two gave evidence relating to the same category of events as close protection officers and drivers of various uh, government officials and their relationships with the Guptas and the movement of cash from the Guptas residence, residences, uh, implicating uh, various parties, including Mr. Gagaba. Um, on Saturday, and this is a matter of public knowledge at the moment, um, what the Commission's investigation team, together with the security ad as advisors, have concluded <coughs> was a, an assassination attempt on witness number one. And it is necessary just to place that on record. The matter has been reported to the authorities and the security of all the three witnesses, witness one, witness two, and witness three, is being attended to. Um, it is necessary, therefore, for the order of witness protection to remain. Uh, no further order is required from yourself. Um, but witness number three gave evidence, Chair, <coughs> that over two periods of time and in various official capacities, he was a driver and a secure, close security protectional officer to Mr. Gagaba, and he relates his eyewitness evidence of what he observed when Mr. Gagaba visited the premises of the Guptas in Saxonwald, and how the um, events showed that Mr. Gagaba was dealing with cash, which witness number three concluded had come from the residence of the Guptas at the particular time. There were two periods, one um, uh, before 2009 and one in the mid, uh, uh, between 2010 and uh, 2018, around 2015, which are relevant to the evidence. <coughs> yeah. It is necessary then for witness number three to take the oath once more. Witness number three is giving evidence remotely from a private location, mm -hmm. an undisclosed location, put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, counsel uh, who worked with me on the matter, Varishka September, is at present with uh, witness number three. Mm -hmm. She will confirm that she is in the presence of witness number three. Witness number three can then take the oath and she will confirm that it is indeed to her knowledge witness number three that has taken the oath. No, that, 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 that's fine. Before we do that, I just want to say that uh, uh, it is most concerning that uh, attempts by some in our society could seem to continue to intimidate and attack people who want to assist this nation on the matters that this commission is investigating. People want to assist this commission to understand what happened in regard to the matters that it is investigating. It is completely unacceptable that witnesses, whether they have given evidence before the commission or are still going to give evidence before the commission, 
are targeted and attacked and attempts are made on their lives. Attempts are made to kill them. It is completely unacceptable. And I would ask the law enforcement agencies to please assist this commission by dealing with these matters expeditiously because those who seek to silence people who want to assist the commission, who want to assist the nation to understand what happened, seem to be quite determined to continue. And attacks on one person, whether he or she has previously given evidence or is still to give evidence, may well deter many others that the Commission wishes to hear from on the matters that it is investigating. I applaud the courage of various people in our country who, despite threats to their own safety and to their lives, and to the safety and lives of their loved ones, have nevertheless come before this commission to assist the nation to understand what happened with regard to the matters that we are investigating. I applaud those who will still continue to come to the commission to give evidence or to assist the commission in any way, despite these acts of intimidation and criminality by some in our society to silence people who want to assist this commission. I hope that the law enforcement agency will act with speed to deal with these matters and to protect all witnesses who are under threat who wish to assist this commission or who have assisted this commission. Uh, I thank the witness three that he has once again made himself available to assist the commission despite the reports that have been had of the attempted killing of Witness 1. We are grateful that Witness 1 survived the attack. Uh, Noted, Chair. Thank you. Yes. Um, we are going to start. Uh, Miss September, are you there? Yes, Chair. I am. Do you confirm that you are with witness one where you are? Witness three. No, Chair. I'm, I'm sorry, witness, witness three. three. I'm sorry, witness three. Do you confirm that you are with witness three where you are? Correct, Chair. Okay, all right. Um, I have previously seen uh, witness three. He previously took an oath in front of me. So if a member of the legal team confirms that uh, she is with witness three, I accept that. Um, witness three, good morning to you. Good morning, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, witness three, for availing yourself to once again
come and assist the Commission. We appreciate that very much. Thank you, Chair. Um, the Registrar will administer the oath to you now. When she says, give your full names, don't give your real names, just say witness three. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Registrar, you may go ahead. Please state your full names for the record. My name is Witness 3. Do you have any objection to taking the prescribed oath? No. Do you consider the oath binding on your conscience? Yes. Do you solemnly swear that the evidence you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Uh, then, uh, uh, witness three, you will be cross-examined by counsel for Mr. Kikaba. Um, I normally put the, uh, fix the duration of the cross-examination at, at the beginning of the cross-examination. Uh, counsel for Mr. Kikaba, uh, do you... I don't think you should need anything more than 45 minutes. Uh, yeah, I thought about an hour should, should, should suffice. Okay, let's, let's say 45 minutes, but we'll see at the end of 45 minutes how it goes. If uh, it's necessary to, to go into an hour, to an hour, then we'll, I, will, I, will, I will allow you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, all right. Chair, I just wanted to inquire. Um, I'm going to refer the witness to his statement and to a transcript of his evidence yes um as well as an extract from the fundunzi report that comments upon um his employment mm. uh does he have access to all the documentation w wherever he is uh, he should be but mr pretorius will know better Well, we, 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 he should have access to all documents that were known to the legal team as the documents that would be used in the cross-examination. Thank you. Um, Mr. Pretorius? Okay, if um, the witness is going to be referred to a report to which we have not had access, um, we will deal with that. Uh, I've just confirmed with the legal representatives of Witness 3 that the report referred to has not been drawn to their attention, uh, nor ours. Yes. But for, for the rest, the transcripts and the documentation relevant to the evidence uh, yes. the witness has in front of him. Yes. So, so I think there will be a problem with the report because it looks like uh, nobody was uh, given notice that it, could, it would be used. It, it, it was furnished to us. Um, from the evidence leader, Mr. Myberg, but mm. but I can I can tell him what's in the report, and and if Mr. Pretorius has any objection, we can verify that. It's yeah. I'll give the page number, and I'll and I'll read the finding, one of the findings. I think there are two, in fact. If um, if, if that would be in order. Well, well. Uh, um it may well be, well, one, they say the witness doesn't have the report. It might not be the best situation to just answer something um, in relation to a report where you might not know the context. Should we proceed and see uh, as, it, maybe as it unfolds? Maybe if, if, uh, maybe if, while you proceed, uh, counsel for witness three and Mr. Pretorius have access to the report and you indicate to them 
in what area you want to ask questions about. While you proceed, they might be having a look at, at the relevant portion of the report. And when you are done with other aspects of your cross-examination, we can check with them whether they have any yes. problem. And then there is the question of, of course, um, they might have an idea whether the witness could fairly be asked to answer questions even if she has not, he has not seen the report. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I'll place on record it's, it's BB27, bundle to uh, page 272. Uh, that's, that's where the uh, report is located. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just repeat the reference so that in case somebody didn't uh, get it to Certainly. write it down. Yeah. It's BB27, Bundle to page 272. Yes, okay. Um, I think Council for Witness 3 looks at me as if to say, I don't have it. And I think he sees Mr. Maybeck giving Mr. Pretorius a, a, a copy. Maybe if he doesn't have, maybe once Mr. Pretorius has, has looked at it, at the relevant portion, he might share with him. And then we take it from there. Thank you, Chair. Perhaps then I can continue, and, and in the background, Mr. Pretorius and perhaps Mr. Myberg, because he, yes. he, in fact, had shared that bundle uh, with us. Yes. I think Mr. Pretorius would like to say something. Yes, Chair, there is a problem. Um, I've just looked at the page. Names are revealed on the page, which yes. would be a gross violation of the order you make, and yes. in the circumstances yes. of what has happened this weekend, yes. it's a serious problem. Yes. So uh, we object to that being put in without prior arrangements being made, and my yes. learned friend can come back and deal with those at a later stage yes. once there have been proper redactions. Yes. But now already on public record there's a reference uh, mm. and names, yes. and it's just quite unacceptable. Yeah. So the matter, um, we strongly object to anything of this sort coming before you today without proper arrangements being made for redactions. Yes. Yes, Chair, we have no, no difficulty. I was never intending to, mm. to reveal the identity through the report. Yes. Um, I just wanted to read um, uh, the yeah, finding into the record. But could we then just reserve yeah, the cross-examination on that point? Yeah. And, and perhaps Un we can... We, until we, you have had discussions with uh, Council for Witness 3 and Mr. Pretorius... Uh, and then we'll take the matter from there. Yes, but Chair, <laughs> mm. that doesn't solve the problem, yes. which is that this is a matter of, this document is a matter of public record already, and the reference mm. has been given, so uh, perhaps I should draw no more attention. Yes. I think we must all be quite careful that uh, there is a... Uh, uh, Apart from an intentional disclosure of information um, that shouldn't be disclosed, there could be a situation where uh, unintentionally uh, information is disclosed which could lead to a uh, disclosure of identities. So we all just need to try so very carefully. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just to tell you, Chair, it would be simply to to put to the witness, um, this is yeah, what yeah. this, this no, was no, one no. of the findings. No, no, with, no, no. Yeah. Remember, the arrangement is that you will have discussions with Mr. Pretorius and Counsel for Witness Three. When the three of you have discussed, maybe you'll find a way. Then that can be told to me, and then I can take it from there. So for now, we will exclude that part of uh, uh, your cross examination. Uh, thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, then, just, just to tell you, uh, Witness 3, uh, I, the, the topics that I just want to touch on, um, first would be your meeting with Mr. Gagaba at the commencement of your re-employment. Secondly, I want to touch on the role you played um, 
as part of the security detail. Then your evidence about the visits to the Guptas in Saxon world. Next, to, to deal with the log books and the diaries. Um, that may take a, a, a bit of time. Then your evidence about visits uh, by other parties at the same time. Then the question of the cash that you spoke about. Uh, your evidence about the items of apparel that Mr. Igaba apparently purchased. Um, reference to Mr. Malefe in your evidence and then also the timing of, of, of your complaint. Uh, and then we'll reserve the question of the uh, Fundunzi report, if we may. Um, now, witness three, uh, you have your, your affidavit that you furnished um, to the commission. Do you have it? I think it was dated 14 September 2020. The witness could confirm that he, he has access to his affidavit. Witness, can you hear us? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, uh, which affidavit would you, would you like him to confirm to have? Uh, his affidavit that he deposed to for, for the benefit of the Commission, the 14th of September 2020, Chair. Uh, have you got that affidavit, Witness 3? Are you looking for it, or did you not hear me? Miss September, are you there? I do have it, Chair. Okay, all right. You must just tell me if you are still looking so that I know that you have heard me. Uh, okay, yeah, he says he has okay. got it. I wanted to refer you to paragraph 123, paragraph 10. Page 123, paragraph 10 of your witness statement. Uh, do you have that, witness 3? Apologies, Chair. Just for the record. Yes, I do. It's bundle BB14D. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to look at what I'm having in front of me, and I couldn't see. Uh, just repeat the bundle, uh, Mr. Pretorius. Bundle BB14, bracket small d, close bracket. The affidavit begins at page 122. Hmm? It's uh, um, exhibit 14D, Chair. Uh, my registrar says if it's an ESCOM bundle, uh, we don't have it here. Is it an ESCOM bundle? Uh, it's, it's a transnet bundle, as I understand it, Chair. Mm. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, I could let you have my copy. Uh, that's fine. Uh, if, while she's looking... Um, Okay, Registrar, let me have Mr. Pretorius uh, uh, bundle while you look for, for the right one. Check if we don't have it here. Uh, ar arrange for the protectors to go and get it. Uh, okay, I've got 
Yes. May I proceed, Chair? Yes. Uh, does witness three have, have the affidavit? Yes, he said he has got it. Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. Now, I just want to put to you what Mr. Gigaba says in regard to your allegation that you met with him uh, at the commencement of your employment around prior to the commencement of your employment in April 2013. He says that um, his security details were dealt with by his chief of staff, Mr. Tommy Masomi, and he did not get involved in the recruitment process or discussions with you, as you say. He, he denies that he, he had any meeting with you. Um, all of these arrangements would have been attended to by Mr. Masumi. Do you agree with him in that regard? Thank you, Chair. On the day in question, uh, I have met the Chief of Staff, and after our meeting, uh, I was informed that I shouldn't leave the office. Uh, the Minister wanted to see me. And indeed, yes, I have met the Minister after our meeting from the Chief of Staff. All right. Now, in paragraph 16 of your affidavit, you, you find at page 124, you say that Mr. Gigaba would travel in the BMW vehicle with two SA, two SAPS VIP officers, and your vehicle would follow. So you were part of a security personnel in the backup motor vehicle, as you were not a member of the SAPS at the time. It would have been improper for you to have traveled in his vehicle in that capacity. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. And as such, you did not have access to the principal motor vehicle. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, if we could then move on to the next topic about the number of visits to the Guptas. Um, you say that he visited between the period that you were employed um, in the capacity that you've described of about a period of six months from July to December 2013, you've said on about six or seven occasions. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, you say that on one of these occasions you drove Mr. Gigaba alone. And how did that come about? Would that not have been a most serious breach of protocol that we've just agreed upon a few moments ago? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think on the day in question as well, the Minister informed me after we knocked off that uh, she would want me to take him somewhere. And I waited until some of my colleagues left and he went in to refresh, and I waited until he came into the car, and we drove. On the way, he informed me that we go into the Gupta residence. So now I'm you had... Him. Sorry? I interrupted you. Had you finished? Yes, I'm finished. Thank you. Yeah. But, but would not that have been a breach of protocol? You were not a member of the SAPS, and you were not authorized to drive Mr. Gigaba anywhere. Do you agree? But I was informed, uh, he, I was given instruction by the minister himself. And would you just slavishly follow his instructions, even though it would be a breach of your employment conditions and the SAPS protocols? I think I was, I was saving uh, uh, as a member and honestly, I took instructions and I, I, I honored the instruction. 
Well, I just want to put you that Mr. Gigaba denies that you ever drove him on any occasion, let alone to the Gupta residence. Would you like to comment? Now, on the day, yes, I drove the minister to the Gupta residence. I also want to put to you that he denies that he visited their residence on the number of occasions that you describe and that at the most it would have been once or twice during that period of time. Do you like care to comment? I have went with the minister at the residence for about six to seven times. Uh, just one second. Um, did you find the file? Oh, okay, right. I'm um, sorry, Mr. Proteus. I wanted to return your file if she had found ours, but uh, she didn't find it, and they're trying to get it from the residence. Certainly, Mr. Okay. Should okay. I continue? Yes, you may proceed. Now, of course. The way of testing your evidence against Mr. Gigabas on the number of visits would be to have regard to the diaries and logbooks because they would provide the independent and objective evidence. Is, is, do you agree with me? Repeat the question. Of course, the way to resolve the dispute between you and Mr. Gigaba about the number of visits to the Gupta's residence in Saxonwald would be to have regard to the object of independence in the form of his diary and your logbook. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Were any of these visits that you've testified about now recorded in Mr. Gigaba's diary? No, they were not. Could I refer you to your evidence? Um, it's, it's at bundle 2, BB24, page 244, line 22 to 25. Uh, it's time to find the panel for me. She was you want to just repeat the bundle number and everything? Unless she has found it. Have you found it? Okay, she has found it. Uh, maybe the page number. It, it is BB24-244, line 22 to 25. I don't have that page. Thank you, Mr. Witness 3. This is the right one. Um, 
Uh, there seems to be a problem with the reference. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Pretorius is telling me that I should use um, the SEQ 072021-51 reference. Uh, well, what just bundle is page. it first, if it is a bundle? If I could just place it on record again, Chair, it is bundle SEQ 072021-51. Okay, that won't be a bundle as such, but uh, I think I know what document it is. Mr. Pretorius, is it the in-camera application? Uh, Chair, a bundle was prepared for the particular purposes of this cross-examination. Yes. It contains several documents. It's SEQ 7-2021. Uh, it's in a file that uh, was given to you, Chair. Oh, and okay. No, no, thank you, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, it was under another file. I think I've got too many files here. <laughs> yes, I, I, uh, I understand completely, Chair. Uh, um, but yes. the bundle that my learned friend is referring to mm. has certain references. The yeah. bundle before you has other references. Yes. But we can... Um, Yet a common reference at the bottom of the page, which has the page of the transcript. So if my little yes. friend can put his reference yes. uh, on record, because that is important. Yes. And then also put the page number at the bottom of the page, then yeah. we can all follow. Okay. okay. That's in order then, Chair. Yes, okay. I'll also just try and follow... Um, my learned friend's uh, page number, but then it's so it's so you just give uh, the reference afresh so that yes, yeah, it's it's SEQ page, page 51. Yes, and uh, it's type page 115. I think your SEQ reference is not complete, is it SEQ 07 stroke 2021? Yes, I think that's the correct reference, yes. and then it, you say page. It's page 51. Is that the red number or at the bottom? Um, well, I'll give both numbers. It's page 51 of, of that bundle, and it's type page 115 at the bottom of 152. Do you have a chair? Uh, yes, it's uh, page 51 on the red numbers at the right top corner and page 115 at the bottom. Yes. Have you got it, witness three? Yes, I do, chair. Okay, all right. Now, you were asked there were any of these visits recorded in the minister's diary? And you say, yes, they were, Chair. They were handed over to witness one. So which is the correct answer then, witness three? Thank you. Uh, in some of the occasions, uh, I was informed by the minister not to register the movements to the visits to the, the, the Gupta family house in Sex and Life. That was on some of the occasions. But on other occasions That's not, right. and then were they recorded? Witness three? Can you hear us? Yes, Chair. The question is whether well, yes, you the question is whether your evidence is that on some occasions these visits to the Gupta residence were recorded in the diary, but on other occasions they were not recorded. Is that your evidence? That's correct, Chair. Sorry, I didn't hear. Did you say that's correct? He said that's correct. Now, if you go to page, your affidavit at page... 
one. Um, I'm afraid you just have to. It's BB. The whole reference because we are using different. Sorry. Titles, yeah. Yes, Chair. Um, and and can I just say to perhaps Chair, without being prescriptive to you and Witness Three, mm. it would be useful if both of those bundles stayed open all the time because I'm just going to move between them. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. And and so. Uh, yes. Just. just <laughs> no. No. That that that's fine. But each time you refer, just for the transcript, I, I shall. it will be important to say to keep I understand. the board here. I understand, Chair. Okay. On so it's, it's, it's BB 14 little d, yes. witness square brackets 1 dash 3 dash 125. Yes, and the page number? And, well, 125 is the, is, is, is the page number. It's paragraph 20.1. Okay, that is the red numbers uh, at the top right hand corner, one to five. Do you have it, witness three? Yes, I do. It's it's at the foot of the page, 20.1 and 20.2. I'll, I'll read it out. It says, none of these visits were recorded in the minister's diary. And then 20.2, by instruction of the minister, I did not record the trips to the Gupta's residence in the logbook of my allocated vehicle as those were unofficial trips. You see that? Do you see that witness three? Yes, I do, Chair. So is that what is that evidence incorrect? Because we understand from what you just told the chair now that not all the trips were recorded, but some were. Now you're saying none were recorded. And you realize the importance of having a record of these visits. So we have an objective and independent mechanism to test the veracity of your evidence. Would you care to comment? Like I said earlier on, uh, I was in, in, in some of the occasions, uh, I was informed by the minister himself not to record all the visits on the logbook. And uh, yes, some occasions we recorded, some we didn't. And, uh, we tried to locate the, the logbooks from, from our offices and they couldn't, they couldn't find them. So, let me just try and sum up your evidence. You've said on various occasions, I've, I've, I've shown you uh, what you initially said, is that the visits were recorded and they were handed over to witness one. Then you've said some were recorded, some were not. Then you've said in your statement that I've just read to you, none of them were recorded because that was the instruction of the minister. And now you're also telling us that we can't verify and test your evidence because the logbooks are nowhere to be found. Is that correct? Uh, I'm sorry, I I'm think... Sorry. Okay, well, if he has answered, I thought you might break it up to manageable propositions. Cert cert certainly, uh, Chair. Just to make sure so, that... So, yeah. so, so let me just try and summarize your evidence in mm -hmm. each part. You've said initially that 
there was a log and a record of the visits, and they were handed over to witness one. Do you agree? We've gone through that in your evidence. I do agree. Then you've said that in your oral testimony this morning, questions from the chair, that some of the visits were recorded, others not. Do you agree? I agree. Then you say in your statement that we've just looked at paragraphs 20.1 and 20.2 that none of the visits were in fact recorded. Do you agree? Some of the, the, the visits were recorded, some were not recorded. But then your statement is wrong, your affidavit. Paragraphs 20.1 and 20.2. Uh, well, well, maybe before you put that, what counsel was putting to you, witness three, was that in your affidavit, particularly in paragraph 20.1 and 20.2, you said none of the the visits were recorded in the minister's diary and you said by instruction of the minister you did not record the trips to the Kuta residence in the logbook of your vehicle. He just wanted you to confirm that you accept that that's what your affidavit says. Do you, do you agree with that? I fully agree, Chair. All right. I think you can take it from there. Thank you. And then we know that you say the logbooks and the diary are not being produced before this commission and they're not available. Is that correct? That's correct. So at the end of the day, we just have your word against Mr. Gigaba's word. Is that correct? Sorry, Chair. Just for the sake of clarity, there seems to be some confusion between logbooks on the one hand and diaries on the other. Uh, as I recall the evidence of uh, witness number three, it was not that the logbooks and diary were unavailable. I don't know what the position is about the diary. He said the logbooks were not available. So I think the position should remain clear throughout. Okay, all right. Understand. But in any event, on your version, they were not recorded in the diary of the minister on his instruction. Is that correct? That's correct. So if I could again just put my proposition, we only have your word against the minister's word for this. We have no way of testing your version against the objective evidence. Well, you? maybe you should say uh, against the records of either the diary or the local. Yes, yes, yes. it yes, be much is. more clearer to yes. you. So, in the absence of the logbooks and the diary, we only have your word for it as to the number of visits that occurred. Do you agree? Do you agree, witness three? Agree. Uh, did you say you agree? I agree on the basis that uh, with the minister I have visited the Gupta residence six or seven times. Then I agree on. Well, we, we, I think the proposition was you agree that because uh, there is no written record of the visits either in the minister's 
diary or in the logbook. Then, as to what the true position is, the Commission will depend on your word as well as the word of the former Minister, Mr. Kikab. There I agree, Chair. Okay. And then, just to refer you to your evidence at, uh, at page 116. Uh, one, 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 sorry, it's, it's again, <coughs> Chair. One second. I think I've, they've, found my, they've brought my file. So, let's return Mr. Pretorius one so that he can have access to it. Thank you. It's SEQ 0721, a paginated page 52, and type page 116. Does Chair have it? Just give me the page again. It's the SEQ 07 slash 21 bundle. It's paginated page 52, type page 116. Okay, I've got <coughs> Does witness 3 have it? Yes, I do. And you'll see Uh, about line 14, Mr. Pretorius asks you, so were they or were they not recorded in the minister's diary? He says they were not recorded at all. And then he goes on, and did you record these trips in the logbook of your vehicle? He informed us we shouldn't record this information in the logbook, so we didn't. Did he give you a reason for telling you to not to record them in, in your vehicle logbook? He says no reason was given to us. So, I've already made the point that that evidence is in conflict with what you've said today because you've said that there were some occasions where it was in fact recorded. But I'm putting this passage of the evidence to you to, in answer to what Mr. Pretorius had said about the confusion with logbooks and the minister's diary. I think that evidence clears it up. Do you agree? It, it might be might be clearer Major. if you uh, specifically say what the confusion was yes. that you seek to address, and yes. you say this clears up. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. And the confusion relates to whether it was on all occasions that there was no record, or whether there was indeed some occasions where there was a, rec a, a, a note made either in the diary or the logbook. But you, you don't need to respond. I think you have responded. Now, in regard to this instruction, did you not feel uncomfortable about breaching your uh, standing orders concerning logging all trips that you were involved in in the vehicle on the instruction of the minister. Did, did, did it not strike you as something you should not adhere to, that instruction? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I once uh, reported the, 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 the event to my superior, which is witness one in this case, that uh, I'm told that uh, by the minister that I shouldn't record these trips. So he was informed as, as, as my line manager. And was it recorded in writing? No, I had a verbal meeting with him. And 
Has he given evidence in that regard to your knowledge? No. So, again, it's just your word that we have to accept that this report was made. Is that correct? That's correct. I just want to put to you that Mr. Gaba denies having given any such instruction. The issue of recording trips in a logbook is a matter that fell within the authorities of the officers in their capacities as members of SAPS and, in your case, part of the security detail. Do you want to comment? Would you care to comment? Witness okay. 3, can you hear us? I think I, I missed some of the part. I couldn't hear clearly. Can you please repeat? I certainly will. I'm, I'm saying Mr. Gagaba denies that he gave you any such instruction. His, his evidence is that the issue of recording trips in the logbook is a matter that fell within the authority of the SAPS and in your instance subject to your protocols he did not instruct you or any of the other officers I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I think let's break it up first, uh, witness three uh, counsel for Mr. Kigaba says that uh, Mr. Kigaba's version is that he never gave you such instructions what do you say to that? He instructed me that I shouldn't record the and trips in the logbook. Okay, and counsel for Mr. Kigaba will now tell you uh, what Mr. Kigaba has to say in substantiation of his denial that he gave such instructions. Yes, you may proceed. Thank you. And he also says he did not instruct any of the other officers not to record any trip in their logbook. It was not his business to do so, and he had no authority to do so. What do you say to that? He, he would give that instruction and would have to honor as, as the minister. He would be our client and would have to honor by that. Now, of course, there was, there were at least two vehicles at all times that uh, accompanied the minister. Is that correct? One, the BMW, and then your vehicle behind. Is that right? That's correct. And the vehicle he was in, there would be a log of the visits, would there not, through the SAPS? Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Have you seen a log of those visits? No. Have you ever inquired about them? No, I never inquired. Okay. Let's move on there. We'll move on to another topic now. And um, before you do so, I see, I think we are at about 40 minutes. Uh, what's your assessment of how much more time you need? Um, Chair, I would say uh, 15 to 20 minutes, if, if that okay, would suit right. you. No, that, that's fine. Let's uh, go up to quarter past 11, and then we'll take the tea break, and when we come back, it's now about nine minutes past when, when it's going to pass, then we'll take the tea break. When we come back, probably you'll need only about 10 minutes. Thank you, Chair. Could I ask your indulgence to, to yes. prompt me when the time is there? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, okay. Chair. Now, you, you say that on occasions that you were with the minister, um, 
at the Gupta residence, you saw four individuals. You mentioned Mr. Malefe, Coco, Mr. Ngabani, and, and Mr. Mabasa. Do you, do you agree? Do you recall that? Yes, I agree. Uh, Mr. Gigaba denies that on the occasions that he went there, the one or two occasions in that six-month period that these individuals were there at any time that he was there, in, between July and December 2013. Do you care to comment? I think that's not true. I think uh, I saw them when I was with him there. He should have seen them as well. Now, he tells me, and I want to just put it to you, that in far as Mr. Ben and Gabani is concerned, he only became the chair of Eskom in 2016, as far as he can recall. And uh, in that period in 2013, as far as Mr. Kigaba is concerned, Mr. Ngabani was an, an ambassador in Chile. Would you care to comment? I have seen Mr. Ngabani at the residence as well. In and, all, okay. and also by the same I'm, token... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I think uh, uh, witness three might not have appreciated uh, your question. Uh, the question, witness three, is whether you are in a position to deny Mr. Kikawa's statement that in 2013, uh, Dr. Ben Gubane was not chairperson of ESCOM, but was an uh, ambassador was the ambassador of South Africa in is it Chile or China? Chile. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, do you have any comments about that? Do you know? Yes. What is your comment? What is your response? The response is on in 2013, I have seen Mr. Nguwani at the Gupta residence. Not necessarily that he was the chairman of any portfolio, but I have seen him in the residence in 2013. Okay. I take it that what you mean is that you might not be in a position to say what his position was in 2013, but what you are saying is that you saw him at the Kota residence, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, does and that help? Th also? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. And then by the same token, Mr. Mabasa only became the chair of Transnet, I think in either 2014 or 2015. Do you care to comment on that? As I saw Ms. Mabaso, I didn't know her portfolio then, but I have seen her at the residence as well. Uh, just, this might not change anything, uh, Council, but uh, because I've been hearing ESCOM evidence, I can indicate that Dr. Ben Gubane became acting chairperson of the ESCOM board in, I think, March uh, 2015. And at some stage, I think in 2015, still became chairperson of the board. But in 2016, he was chairperson of the ESCOM board. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that, um, okay. Chair. Um, then, if I could just take you to your transcript of your evidence, that's uh, SEQ 0721, just page 53. Uh, or maybe this might be... The a convenient time Thank to take you, the tea adjournment. Uh, we'll take the tea adjournment now. It's quarter past 11. We'll resume at half past 11. We are adjourned. <laughs>
Mute.
the yard, the premises. Was Mr. Kikaba uh, in the car in uh, which was, you were? He was still in the car as I was parking the vehicle. Was he in the same car as you? I was in a backup car, yes, sir. Was he in another car and you were in another car? That's correct. Okay. Uh, was he in a position to have seen what you saw, namely former President Zuma's convoy? Yes, because the motorcade is, is, is quite a, a number of cars. Uh, I'm of the view that uh, he has seen the motorcade. Okay, all right. Thank you. Now let's move on to the question of cash. Um, you, on your version, attended with Mr. Gigaba at the Saxon World residence of the Guptas on six or seven occasions. Is that correct? That's correct. And you say in an earlier period of time you also observed him at the premises of Sahara in, I think, 2004. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, you've also testified, I've seen from your testimony and your statement, that you observed a number of people, I don't need to call out their names, um, we know who they are, um, on, on various occasions carrying bags with money and then going to deposit that money at a vault um, somewhere, uh, I'm not sure where you described it, I don't think it's important. Um, do you agree with me? That's correct. On none of the occasions did you ever see Mr. Gigaba carrying, coming to or from either Sahara or the Gupta resins with a bag full of money. Is that correct? That's correct. And on no occasion did you take him to a vault and witness it, witnessing what you surmise to be the depositing of money. Is that correct? Do you agree? I don't remember taking the minister to the vault. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, he says he doesn't remember taking the minister to the vault. Yes. Well, had you done so, you would have remembered. Of course, yes. Yes. So we can assume you never did. Is that correct? That's correct. And then if we go to your witness statement, Chair BB 14 little d witness 1-3-126 paragraphs 25 to 28. Does Chair have it? Uh, I have got page 126 and I've got the bundle. You say paragraphs? 25 and over the page up to 28. You'll yes. see, Chair, it's headed, it's headed cash carried by Gigaba. Yes. Does, does Witness 3 have it? Yes, I do. Now, you don't need to read that out. You can cast your eye over it. There's no reference there in your statement to Mr. Gigaba having collected or received any cash from the Gupta residence. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, could you then explain why in your evidence, which we find 
Chair. SEQ 07 slash 21, page, paginated page 55, typed page 119. Does Chair have uh, it? Did you say page 55? I, I did, Chair, and 119 at the foot of the page, type page yes, 119. Yes, yes, I've got it, yeah. Does Witness 3 have it? Yes, I do. So can you explain, if you look at line 14, it really starts at line 12, you were asked by Mr. Pretorius, are you able to say where the money came from? And you say, I could not tell that time, but as, as we make some visits, then I could connect the dots to say the money came from the Saxon World residence. And then I'm going to take, take you through Mr. Pretorius's questions, but let's just focus on that. So here you are saying that you are able to tell the commission that you say that the cash that you allegedly saw in the possession of Mr. Gigaba, he acquired and got possession of from the Gupta residence. Is that correct? Correct. Now, can you explain to the chair why you were prepared to make that statement when you have admitted that you never saw him on six or seven occasions as you did with other witnesses collecting money from the Gupta residence? Why were you prepared to make that statement? incriminating my client with no evidence whatsoever. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think I was of the view that uh, the money that I had seen carried by the minister, former minister came from the Gupta family. Uh, it is because, in my view, Every time that we go there, maybe after a day or two, I would see money from, from the boot of his car in a bag full of money. But so you hence I said I connected the dots. I meant that I was of the view that he, he may have found the money from the Gupta. But you had six or seven occasions to observe him as you observed other witnesses, and you've confirmed that on none of those occasions did you see him taking a bag into or coming with a bag out of the Gupta residence or observing that he was taking cash from there. You've conceded that. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. I want to know why you were prepared to come to this commission and speculate and draw conclusions adverse to my client to incriminate him without any evidence whatsoever. I'd like you to explain why you felt that was part of your function coming to give evidence before this commission. Like I said, I was, I was of the view that uh, he may have found the money from the Gupta because so of our, our frequent visits. To the, to the compound. Can, let me put this question. Are you able to concede that what you were saying, uh, namely that you could connect the dots to say the money came from the Saxon World residence, uh, would it be correct to say that was simply a suspicion on your part? It may be, uh, Chair. Okay, all right. Thank I don't you. know if that helps, Mr. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Yeah. And you did not voice that suspicion in your statement. I take it your statement was, 
was, was taken in consultation with one of the evidence leaders, perhaps Mr. Pretorius, Advocate Pretorius. Is that correct? Is it correct? Uh, witness Rick, do you, did you hear the question? Not clearly, Chair. The question is whether, the question is do you agree that in your affidavit you did not uh, express that suspicion? Yes, I did not. And the next question that uh, counsel for Mr. Kikaba asked uh, was whether your statement was taken from you by one of the evidence leaders of the commission, maybe Mr. Pretorius. That's correct. So what we need to understand, witness three, is at the time when you made your statement, your affidavit for the purposes of this commission, you did not voice any suspicion and you had not connected the dots. Is that correct? Is that suspicion correct? has been there, but I, maybe I didn't voice it to the court, to, to the evidence leader. I beg your pardon? He says the suspicion was there, but maybe suspicion did not. Suspicion has been there. But he, he, maybe he did not voice it to the evidence leader. And what made you then voice it during your evidence, your oral testimony? I think I remember now. Remember these things happened uh, quite some time back. Uh, as, as, as I was engaging, that's when I, I started to remember, and yeah, I, I said it. So you'd forgotten about your suspicion when you did your statement? Is that correct? That's correct. And you only connected the dots when you gave your testimony. Is that correct? That's correct. Did That's anyone correct. assist you in connecting those dots between the time that you gave your statement on the 14th of September 2020 and when you gave your evidence? Do you have an answer? Did you hear the question with Nestor? Chair, could you please clarify the question for me? The question is whether anybody assisted you to connect the dots before you gave evidence and said that you connected the dots and concluded that the money came from the Saxon World residents. No one assisted me, Chair. All right. You, you've said that Mr. Gagaba appeared nervous to you when he was exit the, exited the vehicle. Is that correct? That's correct. But he wasn't in your vehicle. How could you have observed that? On the drop-off, he jumped out of the car and he started to run towards the, the, the main door. For Why? me, it was, it was very odd, unusual for him to be running into a meeting in that manner. And, and was this on all occasions? on the six or seven occasions 
he would jump out and sprint to the front door. It happened. It happened once. Only once. Okay. Yes. Well, Mr. Gugaba denies that he was nervous on the one or two occasions that he would have gone there during that period or that he ever sprinted out of his car. You don't have to comment. I'm just putting to you what his version is. Uh, I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't, but <laughs> I understand that you are. Um, yeah, I think you, you are over. I just, I you may be over by two minutes, but yeah. you can wrap up. Thank you. Mm. I just want to put to you that, uh, sorry, quite an important question. Um, just describe the bag that you say you saw in Mr. Gugaba's, the, the, the boot or trunk of his car that had the, the money you say you saw. It was a travel bag, a traveling bag. A travel bag. What do you call a travel bag? Is, is that one of those bags on four wheels that we see important people boarding planes with as part of their hand luggage? I see you smiling behind the mast here. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we, we have, I've had evidence where a witness said uh, he had been offered a lot of money in a bag and uh, when he was asked to describe the bag, he said uh, it's like those bags that lawyers carry. <laughs> <laughs> touché, touché, but you are lawyer touché <laughs> in the broader sense. Okay, um, all right. You might, you might need to repeat your question for the witness. Yes. Um, I was asking you, witness three, when you say it's a travel bag, is just so we can understand, is it one of those bags we see people on airplanes with on, that have normally four wheels and a handle and you, you wheel them onto an aircraft? Is, is, is that what you call it, a travel bag? That's correct. That's different to a sports bag. Not the same thing. A Do you agree? Bag. Sorry, I spoke over you. Do you agree? Is it different from a sports bag, witness three? Yes, it is different, yeah? Well, I, 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 I've got to wrap up. But I'm just going to put the references, we won't go there to save time. But you've described page 249, line 7 to 8. Uh, sorry, that would be, uh, uh, let me give the correct reference, Chair. That would be SEQ 07 slash 21, page 56. Uh, let me just... Uh just say when you say slash 21, slash 2021. Uh, 2021, yes, sorry. Yes. And what page? Uh, page 56. Yes. Okay. Page 120. Yes. You, you then, this will just be my last submission, mm. you describe it there at line 7 to 8 as the bag you saw as a sports bag. Does Chair see it? Yes, I can see it. Do you see it, witness 3? At page 56, line uh, Is eight. Is that you, Chair? You do see it. Yes, Chair. So I what counsel is putting to you is that uh, in your evidence, you describe the bag as a sports bag, but you have today agreed with his you have agreed when he asked you whether the bag you were talking, the travel bag is a bag that is different from a sport bag and it's a bag that people normally carry when they go to board aeroplanes. That's what he is putting to you. What do you have to say about that? Chair, a sports bag 
I think I have one myself. Uh, I travel with that bag. I can put my luggage in there as well. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm referring to. You yes, travel with this first bag as well. I must just say, Council, I was hesitating when you used the example of aeroplanes, whether the description was clear enough for the witness, but I, I, I let I, it go. I understand. Yeah. Well, but we've got on record that, in his words, it, it was different to a sports bag. But, yes. but, but we'll leave that for, for, for you, Chair. Yes. Um, I just want to say to you that he denies he carried large sums of money with him, and uh, if, if on occasion he paid for a meal, uh, he may have had some cash with him, but he certainly wasn't carrying large sums of cash. You can comment or, or not, but I'm just putting that on record, Witness 3. Mm. Do you want to say anything to that, uh, Witness 3? No, thanks, Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm sorry, is that thanks you want comment or you would like to comment? Witness 3? No, I'm not commenting, Chair. Okay, all right. Chair, bearing in mind the time constraints, I had more questions, but, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll defer to the Chair now. Yes, as, yes. As, as they say in, in the Senate, I'll yield back to, to you, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay, okay, no, that's all right. Uh, of course, there is still the other issue that you will discuss with I'll Mr. Discuss with Mr. And, uh, and um, there may be, uh, we'll see how that one is resolved. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Pretorius, um, counsel for witness three, uh, do you want to ask some questions before he does, or shall we? Shall I allow him to re-examine? Chair, given the implications of a certain line of questioning of my learned friend, mm. um, uh, and uh, certain in your and uh, certain innuendos contained in his questioning, mm -hmm. to which I have an objection, but I'll deal with it off the record. Yes. Um, I need to place certain passages of the evidence on record to clarify the situation regarding the evidence of number three, but in the meanwhile, I think there is a request for re-examination from the representative okay, of the you, you, you'll do that later. I'll do that later. Okay, all right. Uh, you, they didn't sanitize before you came in, but they must then sanitize now. Yes, I'll wash my hands. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Um, Chair. Yes, Mr. Gilbert, how much time do, uh, do you think you will take? I want to see if I'm going to uh, I should. You. I should not take long at all, Chair. I think there's probably about three issues yeah. that I need to clarify with the witness, Chair. Okay, 10 minutes should be fine, 15 minutes? Uh, I think, let's say 15 minutes, Chair, as yeah. it may depend on his okay, responses right. as well. Um, witness 3, your counsel, Mr. Dube, will now ask you some questions uh, as his re-examination. Chair, apologies, I seem to have dropped the page yes, that okay. I marked. Okay. If you, do, if you don't find it, you'll just have to improvise as counsel. <laughs> Certainly, Chair. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, witness 3, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Are you well? I'm well, thanks, are you? No, I can't complain. Uh, I think I'm better placed than you are. Um, so certainly, thank you for availing yourself to us. The, the first issue that I'd just like you to clarify 
relates to the log books and the minister's diary. Can we just clarify to the chairperson, when you refer to log books and diary, what it is that you are referring to? Okay, uh, log books, <coughs> it's, it's a record book that we keep for, for all our trips in our official vehicles. And the diary, it's uh, the day-to-day -day program of, 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 the, of the VIP. Now, let's go to SEQ 7, 2021, on page 52. And just move the mic uh, towards you so that you, you don't speak too far away from it. Thanks, Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, witness 3, let's move to SEQ 07. 2021 on page 52. Just let me know when you are there. I'm here, thank you. All right. Now, there was a lot of questions that arose from your evidence in this regard. And I think maybe I will just read from line 12 on page 116 of the transcript. It's page 52, SEQ 07, 2021. And when I'm done reading, I would just like you to clarify to Mr. Chairperson what the actual position is with regard to this evidence. Okay. So I'll start on line eight with Advocate okay. Pretorius, who says, yes. And paragraph 21.1, you say, and I don't understand your evidence now to be this, that none of these visits were recorded in the minister's diary. So what was the position? You respond, okay, normally he will just inform us as and when he wants us to go, he will inform us to go there. So were they or were they not recorded in the minister's diary? You say they were not recorded at all. And did you record these trips in the logbook of your, of your vehicle? You say he informed us we shouldn't record this information in the logbook so we didn't. Did he give a reason for telling you not to record them in his logbook, in your vehicle logbook? No reason was given to us, right? What types of trips did he say you should not record in the logbook? Was it trips to particular destinations or only trips to a particular destination, one destination? And you respond only for the that is in question now. He would say we shouldn't record that. And the chairperson asked, which address is that? You say, he says, which address is that? Is that the Gupta residence? You say, yes, chair. That was the only, or those are the only trips he said you must not record. You say, that is correct, chair. Now, with this evidence in mind, just clarify to Mr. Chairperson, what is the actual position regarding the logbooks and the minister's diary? Were those trips recorded? All right, and so we come out of the State Capture Commission for now. Good afternoon and welcome to On Point. The Matipa Foundation is hosting the fifth annual Gender Equality Wellness and Leadership Summit as part of International Women's Day celebrations. Let's take you there live where the Minister of International Relations, Naledi Pando, is speaking. ...to be reinforced. So we agreed greater action together to support women in areas of conflict, to support women who are displaced to support humanitarian initiatives directed in particular at women. So the Women, Peace and Security Agenda was to be a small part of the work we would do. We also acknowledged in 2019 that 2020 would signal 25 years since the Beijing Platform of Action and of course would signal the beginning of the implementation of the Generation Equality Forum Practical Action. The UN General Generation Equality Forum is, I believe, one of the most promising international women's agendas since the Beijing Platform for Action. It is made more important by the advocacy and leadership young women worldwide have taken up in it. These young women, civil society organizations, business leaders, 
supported by our own Dr. Pozi Lamlambo Nuka, Executive Director of Human Women. They've all decided they wish to be these young women, a generation that concretizes the achievement of gender equality. Talking to them in September 2019, they boldly said to us, we don't want to be, when we are your age, talking about gender equality. We want to have achieved it. We are the generation equality leaders. The initiative through the Generation Equality Forum has highlighted important priorities while we grapple with COVID-19. As has been said by other speakers, gender-based violence and femicide emerged very clearly through the pandemic as global challenges that all societies have to combat effectively and in unity. In conversation with my colleagues in Chile and Mexico, I learned that gender-based violence had increased during lockdowns in their countries just as it increased in our own country during the lockdown. We used our awareness of these matters and of the Generation Equality Agenda to insert into the program of the African Union and the African response to COVID-19 while we served in 2020 as chair of the African Union. Working through the African Union and led by our president, President Ramaphosa, we developed a coordinated and coherent response to the pandemic that we ensured was consistently monitored, that we ensured involved all member states and kept them informed and involved by using all regional and continental structures on the continent. As Chair of the African Union, South Africa also inserted the priority of a gender-based violence combat response by the African Union and placed this squarely as the responsibility of the heads of state and made this part of the AU agenda. We also promoted as South Africa the decade 2020 to 2030 as the decade of the financial inclusion of women in Africa. Because we realized that the inequality that confronts women on a daily basis is very, very strongly tied to their unequal access and ownership and control of economic resources. And thus the financial inclusion of women is, we believe, an important part of what needs to be done in order to address the inequality that we are speaking of today. I refer to the Generation Equality Forum because internationally it is the agenda that has drawn the entire globe into the effort to combat gender inequality. All sectors in society are being addressed, all areas of social action, the practice of justice, access to education, equal labor law, access to information communication technology, and many other social sectors. The initiative is also, I believe, valuable in that it draws together the public, the private, and civil society sector and allows us to establish inclusive collaboration and to ensure that all role players make a contribution. While all of us are concerned about the levels of gender-based violence, if we do not incorporate all sectors in our society in fighting this... Thank you, Chair. So, you know that it's six or seven times because 
on different occasions when you were there with the minister, you saw different people. That's correct. At the times which you have specified when you saw certain people doesn't look like it is six times. You said the one time you saw Mr. Brian Mulefe, that's one. The other time you saw Dr. Ben Gubane, that's second time. The other time you saw Mr. Machela Koko, that's three. The other time you saw Miss Linda Mabasso, that's four. Uh, was it one of these four occasions that you saw the former president, Mr. Zuma, Zuma's convoy? Or was it a, a separate occasion? No, with the convoy was a separate occasion, Chair. So that would be five, if, I, if my calculation is correct. And I think, Chair, he also mentioned there was an occasion where there was a dinner and he took the minister's wife. Oh, yes. So that might take us to six. Okay, all right. You may continue. Thank you, Witness 3. Witness 3, the, the propositions or what has been put to you is that Mr. Kigaba denies most, if not all, of the averments that you have made in your statement. He denies that your evidence is true. Essentially, the inference to be drawn from that is that what you have placed before this commission is a fabrication. Now, are you aware of what happened to witness one over the weekend? Uh, are you, yes, I'm aware. I'm sorry, uh, asking whether he's aware of the reports. Are you aware of the reports, apologies, thank you, Mr. Chair. Are you aware of the reports relating to Witness 1 over this weekend? Yes, I am aware. Now, you've also requested that you should testify in, in private, behind camera. Is that correct? That's correct. And part of that was to safeguard your identity as you were of the view that your life might be in danger. That's correct. Now, given all of this knowledge, more so regarding the reports about Witness One over this weekend, why would you put your life further in danger by fabricating evidence against the minister, or the former minister, Kigaba. I think uh, this is a true reflection of what transpired while I was saving him uh, in my duties. All that I have said in my testimony is a true reflection of what happened in the past. Chairperson, thank you. Thank Those you. are all the questions I have for Witness 3. Thank you, Mr. Duve. Thank you, Witness 3. Um, they'll sanitize the podium before Mr. Pretorius goes there. Chair, firstly, certain facts put in cross-examination need to be checked, and we will check. Um, there may be some inaccuracies that we need to place before you, but we'll do that in due course after proper checking. Secondly, it's unfortunate that my learned friend saw fit to raise the issues in the manner that he did without placing the full record before you. I need to place certain matters on record. The way the legal team and the investigators work with any particular witness is that they form a team and they all work together, sometimes separately, but ultimately always together as a team. 
where a witness is not represented, the statement will be finalized by the team and will be then sworn in an affidavit form for presentation before you in evidence. However, the position is different where a witness is legally represented. And the position in this case, as with all other cases where a witness is legally represented, the statement is placed before the attorneys, they check it, and they give the go-ahead that the affidavit can then be sworn. Now, in relation to this joining the dots and the su suggestion that this might have uh, been uh, suggested to the witness, which the witness has denied, I need to place the full text of the relevant evidence on record, which I would have hoped my learned friend would have taken the trouble to do in fairness, uh, but be that as it may. On page 119 of 152 of the transcript, that's SEQ 07 2021, red number page 55. I just want to read the relevant passages yes. onto the record. Advocate Pretorius, are you able to say where that money came from? This is a particular amount of money that uh, he said he, in evidence he had observed. Witness three, I could not tell that time, but as we make some visits, then I could connect the dots to say the money came from the Saxon world residence. Pretorius, how can you say that? Witness three, because at some point, as we went to the premises, he would go to the Guptas, and we will go to Santon, and he would use to pay cash for his tailored suit. Then there is a number, or there are a number of passages dealing with the type of bag and the condition in which the uh, money was seen to be kept. Then... On page 120 of 152, that's SEQ 07 2021 56, I come back in questioning to the issue of the money and its source. I say, you have just told the chair of an occasion where you saw a bag in the boot of Mr. Gagaba's official vehicle, and you say Minister Gagaba opened that bag and you could see a stack of 200 rand notes in that bag, right? Yes. I say correct. The witness says correct. Then an important passage. I put to the witness the following. Right. Now I asked you earlier because your statement says nothing in relation to where that bag came from. Are you able to say where that money came from through any observation that you made, not any opinion that you might have, but through any observation from what you saw, did you see where that bag came from? Witness three, no, I cannot say where it came from, Chair. And then I ask the question again, I'm sorry. Witness three, I cannot tell you where it came from, Chair. And then uh, the questioning goes on, but it's not relevant to the point that the witness was properly questioned and fairly questioned. Well, well, that uh, part where I take further your questioning may be important. Uh, I say, I don't know if that's line six to the witness. That is because you do not know how it, that is the bag, came to the car, not because you do not want to tell us. You do not know how the bag that had money came into the car, is that right? The witness three says, yes, that is correct, Chair. That's uh, a question from yourself, Chair. Yes, that's yes. a question from me. And I say, yes, then the witness repeats, that is correct, Chair, I do not know. And then I say, yes, okay. Um, and then you say, and nor does your statement say where it came from. You have expressed an opinion earlier in your evidence, but I just wanted to establish that according to your statement, and what you say now, you do not know the history of that bag and how that money came to be in the bag. And the bag came to be in the boot of the minister. We are correct. And the witness three says that is correct, Chair. Yes, Chair. So, um, not sure of the cause of my learned friend's complaint. Mm. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, uh, witness three, I will excuse you now, uh, depending on the outcome of the discussions between um, Council for Mr. Gigawa and Mr. Pretorius and Council, your Council, uh, it may be that you might be asked to come back some other time. But for now, thank you very much for availing yourself for cross-examination. We appreciate it. Uh, you are now excused. Thank you, Chair. Yes, you are excused. Uh, I think uh, we should take about, I'll take about five minutes or ten minutes adjournment before the next witness. Uh, is that fine? Uh, is, five, is ten minutes fine? Ten to, minutes to, is perfect, thank ready. you. Yes. Okay. We'll take uh, a ten minutes adjournment before the next witness. We are just.
Yes, Mr. Solomon. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Yes. Chair, I just wanted to put on record one aspect flowing from my questioning that flowed from a discussion I had with Mr. Pretorius about the connecting of the dots and anyone that witness three may have spoken to. Mm. There's absolutely no suggestion from either me or my client that Mr. Pretorius or any member of this commission would have been, would have spoken to him or uh, encouraged him to connect any dots, and that was not the imputation of what uh, yes. my line was. Thank yes. you, Chair. Okay, no, that's fine. But now that you are there, maybe I could uh, uh, check whether, uh, whether you and I are on the same page on this, that the time that I allowed you for cross-examination would have been more or less about an hour. Is, is that your assessment as well? I, I, yes, I think so. Yeah, I think it started about 25 to it, 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 11. It, I think it was about an hour. Yeah, then there was a 15 minutes tea break, and yes. I think you stopped about 10 to or 5 to 12 or thereabouts. Uh, if uh, I'm not mistaken. Maybe you owe me five minutes, but we can talk <laughs> about that sometime, Chair. <laughs> and uh, two, you did say there were some questions you would have liked to ask, but I take it that you didn't think that they were necessarily uh, crucial. And, and the Chair, I, you know, I'm guided by the Chair. I'm not, yes. I'm not complaining that yes, we couldn't yes. do what we needed to do. Okay, thank okay. You, no, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, your next witness is Mr. Brian Mulefe. Yes. Uh, and this time he would be testifying in regard to matters relating <coughs> to Transnet. That is correct. <coughs> Welcome Chairs. back, Mr. Mulefe. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, your counsel is here. You are, you are legal representative, is that right? Uh, okay, if you can place your re on cell phone record from that side, that would be fine. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon. My name is Clifford Motsebe. Mm -hmm. I am with Advocate Mpilo Sikakane and Mpomulefe. Mm -hmm. We are duly instructed by Molawa Atenis on behalf of Mr. Mulefe. <coughs> okay. We just want to put it on record today, Chair, mm -hmm. that we are not going to make any statement. Thank you. I'm sorry, you are not going to? Mr. Mulefe has not prepared any statement for today's meeting. Okay, I'm not sure. I think your voice is soft. He's not going to read any statement. He statement. has not prepared any statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I know that uh, last week he said he would like to make a statement. I said, well, we'll see when he comes back for Transnet. But this time I was going to be careful to make sure that... Uh, we check whether it implicates anybody before I allow him to <laughs> just <laughs> read his statement. But if he's not going to make any, that's fine. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, then I think the registrar can administer the oath of affirmation again. Please state your full names for the record. Brian Mulefe. Do you have any objection to making the prescribed affirmation? I have no objection. Do you affirm that the evidence you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, <coughs> I truly affirm. I truly affirm. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, yes. the, the You the might wish to, for the benefit of the public, to just give a... Certainly. An idea to the public what matters will be covered by Mr. Mulefe's evidence. Yes. Um, the matters that will be covered by Mr. Mulefe's evidence broadly, uh, Mr. Chairperson, are those uh, set out uh, in, in the summons. And by and large, we will be dealing with the issue of the McKinsey and Regiment <coughs> contracts. Um, we'll be dealing with issues relating to the acquisition of locomotives, 95 locomotives, 100 locomotives, 
um, 1064 locomotives. Um, that, that really lies fundamentally at the heart of our questioning of Mr. Malefe. There, of course, are a number of introductory things that we need to deal with, um, but much of the evidence will revolve around McKinsey regiments and the locomotives. Okay, all right. Mr. Chairperson, the two exhibits that are of particular relevance are Exhibit 22, which you'll find in Bundle 5 that has been produced for this hearing, and then Exhibit 27. Exhibit 22 is Mr. Malefe's transnet exhibit. Exhibit 27 is a so-called POI bundle which has documents in it that are common uh, to the witnesses that we intend uh, to lead and deal with this week, being Mr. Malefe, Mr. Gama, and Mr. Gigabe, and Mr. Singh. Mr. Malefe, you have in front of you Exhibit 22. Yes. Could I ask you please? Uh, I guess we start with the bundle. Do you have uh, Transnet Bundle 5? You look at the spine of the bundle to see whether it is Bundle 5 or zero 05. Yes. So you have got it. And yes. then I think you can go to the exhibit. Uh, yes, thank you. Maybe. If I could take you then, please, to uh, page 28. Yes. Uh, and there you will find an affidavit. You've uh, been here, I know, many times. So when we refer to page numbers, we're referring to the black numbers on the left-hand side. I just would ask you to confirm, uh, Mr. Malefe, that this is an affidavit uh, that you deposed to. It runs from page 28 to 51. And it was deposed to, it appears, on the 20th of January 2021, containing a series of annexures running up until page 114. Would you confirm that that is your affidavit and that you deposed to it, it as reflected here? It is indeed, Chair. And would you confirm the truth and accuracy of that affidavit? Yes, it is true. Chairperson, might I ask you then to uh, enter uh, into evidence Mr. Malefe's affidavit, uh, dated the 20th of January 2021, as Exhibit BB 22.3. Uh, the affidavit of Mr. Brian Mulefe that starts at page 28 is together with its annexures admitted as an exhibit and will be marked as Exhibit BB 22.3. <coughs> and then, Mr. Chipperson, as I've mentioned, the other relevant exhibit is exhibit BB27 found in bundle 6. That contains a series of investigation reports. I don't know if, if uh, Chair, it, you want to admit the bundle now or it is admitted uh, as we, we deal with the reports when dealing with Mr. Malefi's evidence. Um, did we talk about uh, how it would be dealt with Okay, here the bundle is part of bundle 06. Um, and then you refer to exhibit BB27. Uh, but when you say BB27, you are talking about all the documents that are in that bundle, is that correct? Yes, I think it might be more appropriate then, Chair, that I, I deal with it uh, and I ask you to introduce the bundle when we come to the particular. Yes, documents, if, yes. if you would prefer that. Yes, we, we might have to do, do that because I'm a little uneasy about saying all the documents are, are Exhibit BB 27. Thank you, Chair. But it may be that we will have Exhibit BB 27 27.1, 27.2 yes. as we go along. All right, thank you. Okay. Chair, if I may ask a question, I see in those investigation reports um, 
some of them have a heading called findings. Mm -hmm. I just wonder as a layman what the meaning of findings in those reports is. Uh, you mean, for example, in the Funduzi report? No, no, in the Commission's report. We, well, the Commission hasn't made any report. What? Uh, take me to the bundle and the page that you have I think, in mind. I think we'll deal with them when we get to Later. Them. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Mr. But in case you have any concerns, the Commission hasn't made any findings. I said we have not made any findings. Indeed, Chair. Okay, all right. Mr. Malefi, I'm not going to take you uh, through your, your statement uh, in the order in which it, it appears. I'm going to ask you uh, some general questions and then more specific questions where you do, in your affidavit, deal with topics that I'm going to touch on. I'll take you there uh, okay. insofar as is necessary. You, you will understand and appreciate, I'm sure, that uh, Transnet is a different stream to the Eskom stream. And there are some things that I need to revisit. I know you've given evidence about them before. I'm going to try in dealing, for example, uh, with your personal details and predictions as to your appointments, which are relevant for our purposes, but I'll try and summarize and roll those up so as not to waste time. In relation to your personal details, we know that you worked in the Premier's office in Lipopo, then you had a stint in National Treasury, you held a, a number of very senior positions. You then, of course, were the CEO of the PIC from June 2003 to July 2010. And then in April of 2011, you became the GCE of Transnet. Would you confirm that? Yes, indeed, it's correct, sir. Yeah. Uh, was it not April, February? I, I think it was February. February, yes, it was February, chair. February of 2011. April was uh, yeah. ESCO. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. 2015. Yeah. So uh, group, group CEO of Transnet was February 2011. Yes, and I, I, yes. I, where I misread my notes is that you held that position until April 2015. Yes. So it started oh, okay, in February okay. mm. of 2011 until April 2015. I'm indebted to you, chairperson. So that was for a period of approximately four years, Mr. Malef. Uh No, um, it was for a period of over five years. All right. Because when I went to ESCOM, I was just seconded. Yes. So I kept my position at uh, Transnet, and I was just seconded to ESCOM. And I was going to come to that. So you were seconded to ESCOM. That, that is in the April 2015, as you mentioned. Yes, mentioned. yes. All right. And you remained at Eskom, as I understand it, until December of 2016, is that correct? Yes. And then we also know that you had a short stint uh, as a Member of Parliament, and I'm not going to, to deal with that. Yes. Now, so far as your, your uh, educational qualifications are concerned... Uh, just before that, Mr. Maybeck... Uh, you, you just made a point, you just made the point that when you went to ESCOM in April 2015, that was under secondment. Uh, the secondment didn't last your entire time when you were at ESCOM, isn't it? No, no. Sorry, Chair. Yes, it lasted until September. Yes. So, it, sorry, it doesn't make it five years. It makes it four years and uh, maybe some months. nine months. Yeah. Yes. So... So as long as you were under secondment at ESCOM, yes. you remained an employee of Transnet. Yes. In fact, my salary into my bank account was paid by Transnet. Yes. And but, Transnet was reimbursed by ESCOM. Yes. But then you were appointed uh, permanently uh, at, by ESCOM by in ESCOM. September yes. 2015. Yes. And once you were appointed permanently, so to speak, you ceased to be an employee of Transnet and became an employee of ESCOM, is that right? Yes. Okay, all right. Mr. Maybeck? Thank you. Now, so far as your academic qualifications are concerned, I understand that you, you have a, an array of degrees. Um, 
And I suppose we needn't go through all of them, but from what I understand, you have a BCom from UNISA, a Masters in Business Leadership from UNISA, and you have, amongst other things, an honorary doctorate in engineering from the Glasgow Caledonian University. Is that correct? That is correct. But that is an honorary doctorate. Yes. Do you have other honorary doctorates? No, no. I don't have any other honorary doctorates. So I suppose, Mr. Malefe, given your, your qualifications and experience, you were really ideally placed to detect uh, any form of, of corruption whilst you were the, the GCE of Transnet. <laughs> no, I can't say that with certainty, Chair. The fact that you're qualified does not make you a corruption detector. Well, does not make you? A, a detector of corruption, a, oh. a corruption detection machine. Mm. So you say you didn't have then the, the necessary skills no, I didn't or experience say within no. which to, to no, detect I, corruption? No, I didn't say so, Chair. All I right. didn't express an opinion. I just say that I was definitely not a corruption detection machine. And that does not mean that if I saw corruption, I could not see, I could not understand it, or, or I wasn't capable of understanding it. So it is not a, uh, you are able or unable. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm just I, saying that I'm not a specialist corruption detection yes. machine, as you might be. I accept that you weren't a specialist corruption detection machine. Did you detect any corruption while you were uh, the GCE of Transnet? Yes, there were incidents where um, there was issues of discipline, uh, maybe corruption. Uh, it's just that now that you ask me, but I do remember once or twice uh, there was an issue relating to somebody who was a security personnel at TFR that had been involved in issues of discipline, maybe you could even say it was corruption that we dealt with, uh, and several other incidents. It's just that they were not the subject of this commission, oh, so, so I never went back to, to uh, refresh my memory, but there were issues of discipline that we dealt with while I was there. Now, you have been asked about uh, the New Age prediction the new age prediction of your appointment as GCE of Transnet. Uh, as I understand it, though, you haven't previously been actually shown the newspaper article. Could I ask you uh, to go to Exhibit 22, which you have in front of you, and could you please turn to page 401? Mr. Malefe, it's Exhibit 22. So it's, it's your exhibit at page 401. All right, uh, my 401 is a media statement released at the chairperson's instance on Wednesday, 9 December uh -huh. 2020. I think that you may be in the wrong exhibit Bundle. divider, uh, chairperson. Uh -huh. Are the okay? No, I'm terribly sorry. I I, I made the mistake of looking at the red numbers. Yeah. Should have looked at the red <laughs> numbers. So uh, you were of course. Four hundred one. I beg your pardon. The black numbers. The black numbers. I've I've got the I've got it. Yeah. All right. So, Mr. Malefi, you'll see that. That was a newspaper report. It was published on the 7th of December 2010. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, now, I take it you, you won't dispute that the first publication of the New Age actually happened the day before. Come again? The first publication of the New Age was on the 6th of December 2010. So this was the second day of the existence of this newspaper. No, I don't know that. Right. And... We do know that the New Age was Gupta-owned, correct? Yes, I'm not sure of the ownership structure of the New Age. And yeah. 
what, uh, what this says is that former Public Investment Corporation PRC Chief Executive Officer Brian Malefe is set to take over as Transnet boss. And then one, two, three, four paragraphs below that, the New Age has it on good authority that Malefe will be appointed CEO of the board. You see that? Yes, sir. Now, as I understand it, you say that you, you knew nothing about this. No, I didn't know anything about it. But it was brought to your attention at the time. Interestingly, Chair, uh, when I went to check, I was in fact overseas in New York at the time when this was published. And uh, by, the, by the date of this uh, uh, newspaper article, I had actually been there uh, for a few days, uh, maybe over a week. It was at the tail end of my trip uh, to, to the United States. Yes, I, I think perhaps I can just cut through my questioning by asking you to look at the bottom of the article. Contacted for comment, Malefe says, I haven't been informed, I don't know anything about it. Were you contacted? At the uh, time? Yes. Yes. I was overseas, and I think I got a, uh, uh, a message uh, on my phone uh, that said, uh, uh, do you know anything about uh, you're going to be appointed as Transnet CEO? And that was my response. I haven't been informed. I don't know anything about it. Did the message come from I think it came from the newspaper? Uh, Journalist. Okay. Perhaps one of these two journalists. Okay. But I just remember just seeing a message that says that, uh, do you know that you are just, you're going to be appointed CEO of Transnet? And I said, no, I don't know anything about it and I haven't been informed by anyone. Now, Mr. Malefe, would you, I mean, you've said that you don't know anything about this, you, you can't explain it. So, I mean, do you think it was a lucky guess? on the part of the New Age, wild speculation. How do you think it came about? You no doubt would have reflected carefully on it when you get a phone call like you did and were asked to comment about your destiny. No, I did not reflect carefully about you it. You didn't? No. Did you ask them, where do you get this from? No, I didn't. I, Chairperson, even now, mm. I get all sorts of uh, questions about, uh, from the media. Uh, uh, about uh, all sorts of incidents that I don't know anything about. And uh, my answer is very short. I don't know. I can't comment. All right. Um, there's been lots of incidents, if you go through the media, where I had no comment to make because, uh, in fact, the media was wrong and uh, there was nothing like that. But what I'm really getting at is once you were appointed as the Transnet GC, did you surely must have reflected back and thought, well, hell, Someone knew something that I didn't know. No, I must, didn't. But how is that possible? I mean, it seems so <laughs> natural and obvious. Why, why, why is it uh, difficult for you to fathom that I could not have taken that article seriously? And I didn't. All right. Well, well what counsel <laughs> is saying, Mr. Mulefe, is maybe you may be forgiven for not having, not, for not having taken it seriously when they sent you a message and said, do you know that you are, you are going to be appointed the CEO of Transnet? But once it happened, yes. and, it, and it happened only about, what, two, three months, two months after, yes. after the article, yes. he is saying, surely at that stage you must have thought. So it means these people knew what they were talking about. So I should have taken them seriously. That's what he's saying. What do you say to that? No, I didn't think about it. Uh, I didn't. Uh, didn't connect I didn't the article. Stress. I didn't stress and about the appointment. It. Come again. You didn't connect the article and the appointment. No, I didn't. Um, I um, actually, I, I had probably even forgotten about the article because it's something that happened. I was literally in New York, 
And uh, I got to hear that uh, they say that I'm going to be uh, appointed Transnet uh, CEO. I did not know anything about it. Nobody had said anything to me about it. I didn't know anything about it, and I dismissed it. And, and then later on, uh, I, uh, I didn't link the article to my appointment. Were you unemployed at the time of the article? Uh, I was, in fact, at the time of the article, um, in the, uh, I was called up to the SENDF at the time of that. And does that mean you were employed or does that mean you were not employed? It's a, a, a reserve, so uh, I can't say I was unemployed. Yes, uh, but I was uh, I was called up as a reserve, uh, and at the same time I had been doing some transactions with uh, with Investec Bank, which is what I was doing in between. Yes, how long had it been since you had left PIC? Do you remember? Maybe six months. About six months. Yes. Would it be correct to say? Okay, maybe I shouldn't put it this. During that six months, were you unemployed until? You were called uh, on uh, SNTF? Unemployed, I was not looking for a job. You were not looking for a job? Yeah, so that is the definition of unemployment. Yes, when yes. you're looking for a job, and yes. you're not looking. I was not looking for a job. Okay. There, are, there are some transactions that I had been doing. Yes. Um, with, uh, with the Investec Bank. Yes. And uh, at, the, on, at this particular time, mm. I was in fact uh, uh, on call up. The SNDF. Yes. So uh, this was uh, maybe about two or three weeks. <coughs> was three SNDF weeks employment? No, it's. Uh, it was not it's, employment. It's reserves, yes. Yeah. yeah. But would it be correct to say you were not employed during the six months? I was not employed by anyone. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, well, maybe you were self employed. In a sense, because, because I. I Yes, I was not employed by anyone. Let me okay, say. all right. Mr. Maybeck. Thank you, Chairperson. Just sticking with the new age, of course, under your watch as GCE, Transnet then went on to sponsor the new age big interview, correct? Yes. One of the topics that we will come to. So that's on the 7th of December. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you were actually nominated for the position of GCE by Mr. Iqbal Sharma. You know that? No, I didn't know that. Can you turn to page 400, please? Just the page before that article. The page before. It's an email on the 13th of January um, sent to Leaders Limited. They were the headhunters. You'll remember that you made reference to them when giving evidence in the Transnet stream, and it says, Dear Mr. Kamala, you mean in the ESCOM? I beg your pardon, in the ESCOM stream. Mm -hmm. It says, Dear Mr. Kamala, I'd like to nominate Mr. Brian Malefe to be considered as a candidate for the group chief executive position at Transnet. Is this the first time that you come to learn that Mr. Sharma well, nominated? I came to know about it in the context of getting this document, but not mm. until now. Mm. Did I know, mm. and now I mean when, when, this, uh, got the, when this the bundle, bundle was made available. Yes, yes. When the bundle was made available. Yes, yes. Okay. I did not know that this happened. Mm. My recollection is that Mr. Kumalo, Brian, I think it was Brian Kumalo, mm. called me cold sometime I think in January. Mm. Uh, and January said, 2011. 2011. Yeah, it's just important to mention the years because we deal with different years. <laughs> yes. Yeah. January yes. 2011, you say Mr. Brian Kumalo called you. Called me and said that Trans Transnet has been looking for a group chief executive. And they have uh, appointed him as a headhunter. Mr. Brian Kumalo was a headhunter. In fact, he tried to headhunt He him. was from uh, I think Leaders, Leader, Unlimited. Leaders Unlimited. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he called me and said, um, I have this mandate to look for a group chief executive officer. Would you be interested? 
And I said, let me think about it. And I must have thought about it for about a day. Oh, it says, yeah, would you be interested? And I said, let me think about it. And I must have thought about it for about a day or two. And then I called him back and I said, okay, let's give it a shot. And uh, he said, okay, submit your CV to me. And then I sent my CV to him. And then, as I say in my uh, affidavit, uh, he then called me after a few days to arrange an interview with members of the Transnet board. Okay, I think maybe you should stop there because Mr. Yes, Maybeck you. knows how he wants to. Mr. Chairperson, I see that it is just past one o'clock. I yes. take it you would like to take the lunch yes, adjournment. Yes, let's take the lunch adjournment and we'll resume at, uh, at uh, five past two. We are chair. Thank you. 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 Thank you.